Uh, we're talking today with Jenny Jenkins, who is the field media representative for the Internal Revenue Service for Ohio and Pennsylvania. Uh, and you're here today to bring attention to a scam, a telephone scam that, that just won't go away. Explain what it is and how it works. Well, we've been getting reports for several months now that people in various areas around the country, here in southern Ohio, greater Cincinnati area, are getting calls from people who are identifying themselves as IRS employees, but these are actually scammers who are impersonating IRS and calling folks to say that the recipients of the call owe taxes, and if they don't pay right away by wiring money or giving information on a prepaid debit card, uh, some dire straits will happen. Uh, the recipients of the call will be hauled off to jail, or, uh, driver's license revoked, something along those lines. And people are falling for this scam. Unfortunately, yes, people are falling for the scams. Uh, recently, the Treasury ins uh, Treasurer Inspector General for Tax Administration, TICTA, sent out a report that noted some numbers. Um, a lot of people are falling, unfortunately, for the scam. We just want folks to know that if they do receive a call from someone who identifies themselves as being with the IRS and the caller says that payment must immediately be made on taxes due, that is a scam. The IRS would not be asking for uh, somebody to immediately wire money to pay for taxes due. Okay, what, what should people know uh, uh, just about how the Internal Revenue Service operates? Mm -hmm. uh, I, it sounds odd to me that they would even call uh, about your taxes unless mm -hmm. you had already initiated a conversation. More often than not, the IRS will initiate contact with the taxpayer by mail through correspondence. There may be some rare instances where we might contact a taxpayer by phone. That would typically be to schedule an appointment to come in and talk about your tax return. If we have any questions, we might schedule the appointment and follow that up with correspondence later. But more often than not, we are contacting taxpayers by the mail and never would we be asking for personal or sensitive financial information over the phone. Okay. Uh, the, if someone does receive this call, uh, should they call the Internal Revenue Service or should they call the FBI mm -hmm. or who should, exactly should they call? Right. Well, the main thing is do not wire that money yeah. that's being asked for. First and foremost, don't send anybody any money. Um, you can call TICTA, Treasury, Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration, 1-800-366-4484 and specifically report that this, the, this is the IRS phone scam. You can also go to the Federal Trade Commission FTC website at ftc.gov and uh, also identify that this was the IRS phone scam. And you can call your local law enforcement mm -hmm. and let them know as well. All right, we are approaching, we're three weeks away now from a legitimate tax deadline, That's and right. that is uh, April 15th. Uh, uh, are there some common problems or some common things that people should be looking out for mm -hmm. uh, when they prepare their taxes? Well, the thing that I most highly recommend is to file electronically because using the software, it greatly reduces the number of the most common mistakes that people make. Things that might be simple math errors, or maybe not so simple when it comes to <laughs> doing some of these things, but uh, math errors, uh, maybe transposing some numbers, or leaving data out. Um, those are the simple things that the computer can fix for you and then when you go to file your return electronically you'll get a quick notice back if if something's identified as being wrong mm -hmm. so that really speeds up the process and that helps us uh, process your tax return that much more quickly and that also helps on the end side because that helps us get your refund to you that much more quickly as well so first and foremost uh, electronic filing using software that really is the best way to uh, speed up and help you get a complete and accurate return a uh, good idea or not a good idea to call the Internal Revenue Service as we get closer to crunch time well, I, ha I have to say our phone lines are extremely busy this time of the year. Uh, what we recommend is that since we've enhanced our website quite a bit over the past few years, we have so many of the most commonly asked questions on our website in an FAQ section. We also have different tools that you can use, resources like the Interactive Tax Assistant or ITA. We've got tax trails. Uh, we've got a tax map that you can use to help you find answers to your specific tax situation. So in most cases, you 
really don't have to call someone at the IRS. The number is 1-800-829-1040. But first, I would say, go to our website, irs.gov, and see if you can find the information that you're looking for there. Chances are, I think you'll find it there. Okay, uh, last question, a bit thornier question. I don't know if you have the answer to this or not, uh, but of course you're aware of all the controversy that surrounded the vetting of uh, uh, charitable uh, organizations uh, that uh, receive so much national press. I know late last year there were some proposals to uh, change uh, uh, how the defining characteristics of what a charitable organization is to try to straighten out all of this. Uh, uh, do you have any update on what's happening with that or if there any changes have been made in the Cincinnati unit? in reference to uh, vetting these uh, charitable organizations? Well, I think there have been a lot of reports nationally and locally about uh, the different things that were going on with the uh, IRS and exempt organizations and, and that sort of thing, processing applications. Uh, I think most people expect the IRS because when, you, when it comes to a tax-exempt organization, I think there's an expectation that the IRS is, is doing a certain amount of vetting to, to ensure that this group that's is doing the, uh, the 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 program the work that they that they said they'll be doing and, and the reason for their tax exempt status. Um, so the IRS is is working with uh, different elected officials, working through the process uh, to make sure that we're coming up with uh, the the right way to do things to to meet our obligations to the taxpaying public. They do have. Uh, they do expect us to, you know, be doing a certain amount of vetting mm -hmm. to make sure that the groups are, in fact, you know, legitimately tax exempt. Uh, would it be fair to say that this is a work in progress? That the, uh, that is still being refined as to exactly how to uh, uh, do this? Uh, that's sort of outside my scope, <laughs> uh, but I, I think it's fair to say that um, folks in D.C. and locally are are working hard to make it the best mm -hmm. process possible, again, to balance our obligation to do the proper processing mm -hmm. and vetting and also tr try to make it as seamless and as, as quick and easy as possible for the groups that want to get out there and do the good work that they've set out to do. All right, uh, Jenny Jenkins, thanks so much for coming in okay. and uh, telling us about this uh, uh, scam and also some last-minute tips. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm.